Hello, my name is David Larson, KK4 WW Amateur Radio Operator. I've been a radio ham for nearly 59 years. We're located here at N4 USA, the club station for the Foundation for Amateur International Radio Service and the Floyd Amateur Radio Society in Floyd, Virginia. It's been a lot of fun for me working on this series of ante uh, videos for antenna tuners, and particularly looking at some of the older home-built antenna tuners. This antenna tuner we have here today was built by W4KQD. He ended up his retirement career here in the local area. And to give you an idea uh, how old time ham he was, his latest radios were tube type Drake radios, which placed those at least 35 years ago. You know, it's very difficult today to build a transceiver, a modern transceiver with microcomputer and so forth. But we can still build antenna tuners, antennas, and those kinds of things. So let's take a look at this kilowatt antenna tuner and take a look inside. Now, of course, it's easy for me to look inside because it's built in a plexiglass case. W4KQD did some beautiful workmanship here. I think you'll enjoy seeing this. Let's take a close look at the W4KQD antenna tuner. You see he's got two knobs here controlling the capacitors, the capacitor back here on a veneer, and he's wired this so that the veneer reads 100 at maximum capacity, and it reads zero at zero capacity. So these are veneer operated, and here is the rotary inductory counter, rotor inductor counter, so you can keep track of exactly the settings with these three capacitor, capacitor, and inductor. You can log that in for each frequency or each band. You don't have to retune, just go preset. Over here on the left is a three position switch, which gives you a dummy load, match, through, ground, and you go and take a look inside this unit now and you'll see the nice beautiful workmanship in here. Well looking inside you'll see that he used some nice heavy copper strapping for all of his ground connections. And look at this one on the back side here, really heavy. And he used braided copper, which is a wonderful RF ground. All the metal pieces are tied together to ground. Of course, here's one of the capacitors. Like I said, this thing will handle an easy kilowatt. And the rotary inductor being continuously variable from zero to maximum inductance. And over here we see the, the uh, switch that he installed. Very straightforward and simple kind of construction. Let's take a look here at the back side. Here's the ground connection. And notice inside, like I said, a very heavy copper strip tying all the grounds together. So here's the output to the co for coax antenna. If you want to go to a long wire, you go here. Here's his input. This goes to a dummy load. Now, this is a beautiful piece of work by W4KQD, but there's one problem we haven't mentioned, and I want to mention that now. We wouldn't want to use this today running a kilowatt of power, or hardly with any power, because the plexiglass is not an RF shield, so this would be a very high RF field, unless this antenna tuner was way out in another area from where you're operating. This would be a rather risky thing today. We know that our fields are not good for us. However, I would say this. He probably used this antenna tuner for many years, and he lived to be a, quite an old gentleman. So who knows how much it har harmed him. Perhaps not very much, but today we wouldn't take that chance. This is a beautiful example of a T tuner with the two capacitors and the inductor. Some switching and some very nice readouts on the front. So there you have it. This is a beautiful piece of workmanship and you would use this to demonstrate or show an antenna tuner, but don't use it to run a kilowatt of power. 
Well, let me remind you that antenna tuners do not make a poor antenna or poor feed line system any better. But what it does do is allow maximum power transfer from the output of the transmitter into the feed system and the antenna system. So you do need an antenna tuner in some cases. Some cases you don't. But uh, they don't make bad things any better, but they do allow power transfer. I want to remind you that uh, in the text below this video, I have some really nice links to the theory of antenna tuners, SWR bridges, and also to other videos at the end of this video on my other uh, antenna tuners about SWR bridges. Why well, you want to use one, how you use one. Thank you so much for watching our video. Happy hamming and have a nice day.